Don't move. Wait, I don't... So you've come at last. Easy. Let me turn around. Oh my god, Mother, what has happened to you? Who are you? What? But, Mother! Who are you? It's me, Louis, your son. No, you lie. You won't catch me out like that. Louis. Louis isn't here. He obeys his mother. He would never have come here. Mother, I don't know what you've been through, but lower your arm, please. You think I was born yesterday, do you? But it won't work. I'm begging you. One day you will fall. Mother! Why are you here? Let's go, Mother. Let's go home. In all my heart, there's nothing I want more. But I know you won't let me leave. You are evil incarnate. Every word that comes out of your mouth is sharper than a razor blade. I don't wish you any harm. Really, Mother. It's me, Louis. Don't speak to me about him. You will never get him. Mother, stop torturing yourself. It really is me, Louis. How can I convince you? If you really are who you say you are, what was the saying I taught you? You've been telling it to me since I was three years old, Mother. How could I ever forget it? Always keep your mind rational. And open. You knew it. You are smart. You're getting me muddled up. Tell me, rather. Whose place were we at when I told you I was coming here? Mother, I really am your son. You can't trick me. We were in Paris. We were investigating an art dealer. His name? I just told you, you can't trick me. His name was Von Borchert. My god, everything is lost then. I refuse to believe it's really you, Louis. Otherwise, all this would be for nothing. Mother, I, I don't know what happened to you, but don't worry. Everything is going to be fine. I'm here for you and- No, I ordered you not to come with me. I received a letter and Lord Mortimer informed me of your disappearance. So I took the- No, no, no. It's not true. It's a nightmare. Don't tell me that. Have you spoken to him? Oh, shit. She's completely panicked because I spoke to Mortimer. It seems she's afraid of what he might have said to me about her. Did he speak to you? Mother, I don't know what you're imagining, but don't worry. Everything will be all right. If you're worried about what I might think about Elizabeth Adams, honestly... Oh, Louis! Elizabeth is the last of my worries right now. I did what I could for her, but it was too late. Very well. Rational and open, Louis. Since you arrived on the island, has anything strange happened to you? Depends on what you mean by strange. Personally, I think that you being missing for three days and then me finding you underground, minus a hand, well, that qualifies as strange, don't you think? No, my hand is not important for the moment. If that's the only thing you've found that shocks you, then all is well. Now shut up and listen to me. We might still have a chance. Something of utmost importance is going to play out right here. What are you talking about? A conference, Louis. I should think all Mortimer's guests have arrived by now, haven't they? Yes, they have. Since this morning. Perfect. The conference will be able to begin. You will attend this conference, and you must find out what Mortimer is up to. Don't trust him, Louis. Understood? Louis, I made a mistake by coming here. We are in the lion's den. What do you mean? Mortimer, Holm, their guests. Watch what happens. Do you think it's normal that the representatives of the most powerful nations are here all on their own without anyone else? On an island in the middle of nowhere in total secrecy? No, not really, but- Louis! 
They shape the world. They manipulate us. Everything is decided here and now. They create and break states, provoke wars, destitute governments, or decide who will be their leaders. Open your eyes! Mother, calm yourself, please. Nothing is impossible for them. They are capable of reaching everyone, wherever they may be. Through high society banquets, they model the future of us all. And it isn't at all an issue for them. And? What do you propose? It's time to act, my son. You will go to this conference and, from the inside, you'll do everything you can to prevent Mortimer's plan from going ahead smoothly. We can talk later. I'll explain everything. But why? Do as I say, Louis. It's of the utmost importance. Beware of Mortimer. He won't let anything stand in his way. You promised me that after- Yes, after. Go now. Yes, mother, I'm going, I'm going. One more thing, mother. Emily Hillsborough, Emma's sister, came to this island looking for her sister. She probably won't hesitate to take revenge and... It's the signal that the conference is starting, Louis. Don't be concerned about the Duchess. She's the last of our worries. Monsieur de Richet, you're the only one missing at the conference. Please join the guests. There's the alchemical symbol of the earth on the lid. Ah, Louis, I've been expecting you. Uh, thank you for joining us. We are about to begin our conference. Let me explain what is at stake. Thank you kindly, but what do you expect of me exactly? My mother's the one who's supposed to attend, not me. That is indeed what was initially intended. Unfortunately, she still hasn't been found, and my guests can't stay here indefinitely. 
The conference must begin, and it would be truly beneficial to the Order to join in the project. Consequently, I would like you to replace her during her absence. What is at stake here is of the utmost importance. It's important that the French Order gets their say. And should you need any advice, don't worry, you are not alone, Louis. Very well. Can you give me a brief explanation of the aim of it all? Of course, Louis, I was coming to that. The aim of these meetings is to bring together the most influential people in order to think together about the future. But the future of who? Of the world, Louis. Our desire is to steer the destiny of our respective countries for the good of all and to no longer suffer the random hazards of history. In concrete terms, how do you organize your discussions? A conference is always organized the same way. There are two masters of ceremony who determine an important subject. You and Sir Gregory, I presume. Exactly. We shall be the masters of ceremony. It was our obligation to each bring to the table several guests in order to debate a subject. Once the debate is closed, a decision will be made by a vote of all the participants. By a unanimous vote. If the project is not agreed on by all, then it will be rejected. And neither of the two masters of ceremony have the right to vote. It's up to the guests alone to decide, Louis. In other words, us. Gregory and myself are merely the go-betweens. Finally, if the project is validated, each guest goes home and starts working to make it happen. It can take years. How long have you been active? Oh, this tradition has more or less always existed, Louis. It has continued from generation to generation. Do you often hold this kind of society dinner? In general, once a year, but in actual fact it tends to be events that dictate our gatherings. Can you give me an example of an event that was decided here before being implemented in the outside world? Well, take the French Revolution. It was decided right here two years before its implementation in France. Concerning the case of the French Revolution, I wasn't invited. But as far as the American Revolution is concerned, Louis, I can testify that we planned it five years before implementing it, for example. Louis, let me keep you a moment. I would like to let you in on a secret before we begin, because I'm going to need your assistance. You see, the project I'm going to present concerns the territory of Louisiana in North America. It's currently Spanish territory, and I'm going to make the proposition to the Assembly for it to become French. But... How does that concern me? Well, you see, I prepared this project with your mother. We began thinking about a crazy idea. Unfortunately, Sarah went missing before getting the bigger picture. I don't intend to stop at Louisiana. My idea is to increase the territory of the United States. The first stone of this vast project consists of getting Spain to cede Louisiana to France. Once it becomes French, France will hand it over to the United States, which will then allow them to double the size of their territory. And that's where you come in. France and the United States, hand in hand, two democracies illuminating the world. But why spread it over two phases? Why not announce the overall project immediately? Unfortunately, if Spain were to hear that the intention of all this is to allow the United States to grow, they would never sign. Manuel Godoy is perfectly aware of President Washington's appetite. If the United States took Louisiana, Godoy would know full well that he will have lost the entire North American continent. Things must take place in several stages. Otherwise, the change will be too brutal, and he will have no choice but to reject the project. Take a look at them. Apart from President Washington, they all belong to monarchies. Do you really think they won't resist? 
Of course they'll fight, fearful as they are of losing their precious privileges. But the world needs visionaries, like you, like your mother. It's a pity Sarah isn't here to see it. She only knew about a tiny part of the project. I hope I can count on you, Louis. It's time to start now. I must ask you to keep it to yourself for the time being. Take a seat, follow the discussions. We will have an opportunity to catch up later, and you'll be able to let me know your thoughts. Blast it, Mother. You didn't know about everything. This project is commendable. Why tell me to beware? Could you have gotten it wrong? I can tell you that someone is an idiot. My friends, I propose we get started. First of all, I would like to thank you for taking the time to come. The honor is ours, my lord. As per our custom, here we are all together to discuss the face of tomorrow's world. Even though there may be certain tensions between our nations, I must ask you to keep an open mind. As Sarah de Richet is unable to be among us, please welcome Louis de Richet who will represent the Golden Order and will vote on its behalf when the time comes. Welcome among us, Louis. Welcome, Monsieur I Monsieur. hope he'll be more effective than his mother regarding the protection of the King of France. The Order has proved particularly inefficient. Come, Manuel, you're not going to spoil our visit. The Order's mission was not to protect King Louis XVI, as far as I am aware. We are talking about the King of Divine Blood, for goodness sake! It seemed obvious to me he needed protecting. If the Golden Order wants to pride itself on being an influential organization, it should have kept him alive. Thank you all. I am honored to be among you today. I will strive to represent the interests of the Order as best I can. Perhaps we may begin, Lord Mortimer. Certainly. I have a dream that our nations will continue to support each other, more now than ever before. A dream that, for the sake of common good, we will do what it takes to ensure stability in the modern world. I have a dream that we shall lead by example and ensure that the American territory may remain in peace. Thank you for the thought, Lord Mortimer, but I don't see where you're leading. I'm coming to it, Mr. President. I need not remind you that North America is currently divided between the United States on the East Coast and Spain, which occupies the remaining two-thirds of the continent. Well, I propose that Spain cede the center of the continent to France, namely all of Louisiana. Louisiana? But, well, it is not for sale. Lord Mortimer. I sincerely hope I have not come all this way just to hear you ramble on about what Spain should and should not do. When we went to all the trouble of gaining the territory a few years ago, it was not just to lose it today. Have I made myself clear? What did I tell you, William? You speak of union, and yet here you are about to tear us apart. Duke Manuel, I perfectly understand you. But rest assured, you will soon adore my proposition. You shall see. Well, since you give me the choice, my good fellow, allow me to doubt it. However, I am impatient to hear what Spain could possibly gain from the sale of Louisiana. I never spoke of a sale, my good fellow. What? I, I do not understand. There is one more territory left to conquer, if I am not mistaken, in the Northwest. It is, of course, occupied by your notorious Indians, but... We shall soon be rid of the savages, so that is not the question. Duke Manuel, I believe that Spain should cede Louisiana to France free of charge. This is utterly grotesque, Lord Mortimer. What a strange example you set for your young protégé. Isn't that so, Monsieur de Richet? Do you understand anything of this proposition? If I were you, Senor Godoy, 
I would think twice before stirring up a scandal. I beg your pardon? Given the size of your colonies, you won't be able to keep them for long. A number of countries are eyeing them as we speak. The United States would have no trouble taking them. For all intents and purposes, you have no army in place. By wanting to keep everything, you risk losing it all, especially your colonies in South America, which are far more valuable to you. That is indeed the danger, Duke Manuel. If it comes to war over Louisiana, you will lose. And probably a good deal more than you now imagine. Young man, you are indeed a dark horse, aren't you? I must say, William, I find your project mostly disfavors me. I thought you were my friend. And I am, Mr. President. That is why I'm doing everything in my power to calm your expansionist fervor. France, in Louisiana, should persuade you not to attempt anything to take the territory by force. Louisiana is a vast wetland where you would needlessly lose most of your troops. It would weaken you and offer certain nations the perfect opportunity to take back your famous United States. I am protecting you from yourself, George. Trust me. I understand. But with friends like you, sir, I certainly don't need any more enemies. I hope you know what you're doing. Not to put too fine a point on it, Lord Mortimer, uh, but I doubt the Holy See would be in favor of Catholic Louisiana being handed over to secular revolutionaries and king killers. I should think Monsieur de Richet has an opinion on this subject, does he not? In any case, my lord, I doubt the English crown will agree. Ich will say that I am Emily. I will not be able to accept this accepteren. Duchess, I am persuaded that we shall find a common ground. That's enough, William. These are great times. We don't care about the fate of Louisiana. That worthless expanse of putrid swamps interests no one but yourself. Speak for yourself, my friend. Hold on there, Mr. Royal Gigolo. Lower the volume and let Sir Gregory finish. Home, Godoy, and now Volner? Mortimer's adversaries are ready to tear each other to pieces and he takes a malicious pleasure in watching it happen. How dare Gentlemen, you! Gentlemen, let us try to remain calm. There you are, William. See where your projects have taken us, as per usual. Chaos! That's enough. I'm tired. We shall continue this discussion tomorrow, but please be aware that your project will never be ratified. Those who are opposed to this project, follow me. Are you coming with us, Monsieur de Richer? Come, Gregory. I think Louis would rather stay. Wouldn't you, Louis? As for me, I think I shall remain with Lord Mortimer, Sir Gregory. You are committing a grave error, Louis. Time will tell. My friends, I would like to thank you for staying. Good God, William. What is this I hear about you reinforcing military power in Louisiana? I have no interest in having France for a neighbor, and you know that very well. Calm down, George. Louis, explain our plan to Mr. Washington, please. You see, Mr. President, Lord Mortimer anticipates that once France obtains Louisiana, they will cede it to you. What do you mean? To us? The United States? You heard right. But I... President Washington, the United States will double in size. By what miracle have you... You need to expand, George. You and France are the two major democracies in the modern world. It is necessary that you both become superpowers. Are you really going to sponsor democracy throughout the world? Of course, Monsieur Peru. That's why I don't want Spain to get too attached to those weapons. Uh, please continue, Louis. 
Explain my vision to Mr. President. Mr. President, Lord Mortimer intends for you to conquer all the North American continent. He's relying on you to not stop at Louisiana, but to continue to push west. Indeed, it would be dishonest to pretend that this is not my final objective. But why didn't you tell me before? So that Lord Mortimer would appear to be isolated without support. Exactly. You got it, Louis. Lord Mortimer retains the advantage by advancing under cover, and for it to work, he needed you to act surprised. William, you haven't changed. Always one step ahead. One step ahead? You're joking. More like five. On that note, my friends, it's getting late. Mr. President, continue to take offense over my project when we resume the conference in the morning. You do it to a T. And if Sir Gregory has the audacity to send you an emissary to convince you to go against me, do me a favor. String him along if you can. The more they believe we are divided, the more we'll have our hands free. Only too happy to oblige. Now, let us get some rest. We've got a big day tomorrow. Good night, gentlemen. Good night. Louis, if you have a minute, I would like to ask a favor of you. I'm going to require your services. How can I be of help? Tell me all about it. Our adversaries are many, and the closing vote of the conference will soon be upon us. Time is of an essence, so I'll need you to assist me this evening. And how can I help? I need you to go this very evening to persuade Signor Godoy to join us. He is the backbone of Gregory's resistance. Turn him round, and all the others will follow in such a stampede that Gregory will be able to do nothing but admit defeat. Lord Mortimer, with all due respect, don't you think I'm the last person Godoy wants to talk to? I'm sure you can do it. I believe in you. Lord Mortimer, you're not telling me everything. Let's say I wouldn't disapprove if the right honorable, though nonetheless choleric, Duke Manuel put you in his bad books. If it could motivate him to declare war on France, it would greatly serve our interests. War? What do you mean? I told you before the conference. The more we distract Spain from the Americas, the less it will have an eye on Louisiana. But all the same, we're talking about a war in Europe. Don't worry. That's why Mr. Bonaparte is with us. I am convinced we'll be perfectly capable of managing the conflict. And Signor Godoy is not a great soldier. He will not commit Spain to a long war that he won't be capable of managing. I'll go straight away. Thank you, my boy. And. Get some rest afterwards. Big day tomorrow. Hmm, which four-letter word could open this chest?
Peru's name tag's fallen off, and his door's ajar. The Massacre of the Innocents by Rubens. A bit gloomy. Guess my room is not that bad. Dear Monsieur Peru, I'm writing to thank you for the funds you sent. These funds will be crucial for the renovation of the western wing of the orphanage. The children you sent are doing marvelous. I have no space left. I'll retrieve it later. Another painting on the Massacre of the Innocents? Nice decor for a revolutionary tribunal judge's room. Leave me, Dorice. I don't feel like talking. Your door was ajar, and well, given the state of your room, I, I was worried. It's none of your business. Very well. I'll leave you then. See you tomorrow, monsieur. Duchess Emily Hillsborough. Duke Manuel Godoy. Ah, Monsieur de Richet. Uh, you wouldn't have seen Duke Manuel by any chance, would you? I was going to ask you the same question. I wanted to speak to him, but no one will open the door. I'm not sure he's in there. If I want to pass through, I'll have to get Volner out of the way. I've searched all over the manor, but I can't find him. One thing's for sure, Monsieur de Richet. He's neither in his room nor on this floor. I've just looked all over. I propose we both look for him. The first to find him tells the Duke that the other is also looking for him. Agreed? Perfect. Let's do that. I shall have a look in the library. If you find the Duke before me, tell him I want to speak to him. Yes. Let's proceed as you say. Thank you, Monsieur de Richet. Right. Now be a good boy and go look somewhere else.
Manuel Godoy, a painting of himself in his room. Now that's not going to help him develop a sense of modesty. Mary Louise of Parma. <laughs> How ironic having a painting of the Queen of Spain in one's room, my Lord Duke. Hey, it looks like someone slipped something in the back here. It's a letter. Let's see what it says. It reeks of perfume, and it's written in Spanish. Godoy, you really are a little devil. Kiss of Judas, painted by Caravaggio. This is how Judas pointed out Christ to the Roman soldiers. Can you imagine a worse betrayal? Don Quixote. Talking without thinking is like shooting without taking aim. Hmm. I'm gonna have to think about that. Prometheus. Punished for stealing fire from the gods and giving it to man. Brutus and his companions taking an oath to kill Caesar. Charles IV of Spain. Now there's no chance of Godoy forgetting who he owes everything to. Maria Luisa of Parma. Although not Godoy's true love, the queen is his benefactress according to some people. Amber crystals.
Inferno by Dante. Abandon hope, all ye who enter here. Lovely lectures Mortimer's giving to his guests. Very jolly. Monsignor, his eminence Cardinal Piaggi. President George Washington. President George Washington. Monsieur Johann von Wulner. Great Work of the Soul by S. Madone. Pure alchemy is a thought, an art that is performed on the matter of the soul. Great alchemists work to transform and perfect the latter by a series of processes known as the Great Work. There are four phases to attain the ultimate in spiritual fulfillment. The human soul must descend, be corrupt, in order to become decomposed. It's something like what I felt when I think of what I found out about my mother. The soul broken up must be purified by the alchemist. Nice program. The soul must be transformed in order to attain sublimation by the recombination of the alchemist. It's tempting. Thus ends the great work. The incarnation of the purified spirit. The elevation of the soul now become perfect. It's resurrection, thanks to the action of the alchemist. Except if the alchemist has bad intentions, then it's called manipulation. Very metaphorical, as occult theories go. The human spirit being the prima materia of the alchemist.
Carmelite water. They say that if you drink this, it gives you a real boot. It's a beautiful weapon. The Levy Damask Blade, my dearest son. Duchess Emily Hillsborough. Duke Manuel Godoy. Atrus, the Miller brothers. Mother expressly forbade me from reading it. Amber crystals. is surrounded by a triple circle. All right, I've retrieved everything. Duke Manuel? Well, well. Monsieur de Richet, I was not expecting you. I am not in the mood, sir, I warn you. What do you want from me, sir? I see you're still feeling under pressure. Since your arrival, I've noticed that you've been on the defensive. Huh? It seems to me that Monsieur Perru has a knack for getting your back up. That is the least you can say. Indeed. I was warned. I knew what to expect. For God's sake! Why in the hell did your people execute their king? 
Have the French gone stark, raving mad? There are nothing but monarchies in power in Europe. They will all come crashing down on you. We shall see. It might well turn out to be the opposite. <laughs> you certainly do not lack for audacity, young man. Just tell me one thing, monsieur. Why did you side with Mortimer? He is alone. Isolated. The United States can do nothing to help you, and France is surrounded by over ten countries just waiting for the word to pounce. Really, I do not see why you choose Mortimer. Oh, it's really quite simple, you know. Whose place are we at? Who can manage to bring together so many influential figures under the same roof? Technically, Sir Gregory brought more guests than Mortimer. Yes, but in whose name? Who organized the party, Senor Godoy? Who pays the bills? And you are forgetting something fundamental. Who has the biggest army nowadays? Uh, yes, 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 yes. There's no shame in admitting that France is militarily superior to you. That's why you're considering joining forces with other European countries in order to confront us. I agree that Mortimer does have some powerful assets. Tell me, do you really believe Spain has any interest in ceding Louisiana to France? First of all, the question is to know what Louisiana can be used for. We agree that today, all it brings you is death. Every day, a few more Spaniards die far from their birthplace. I cannot deny that Louisiana is a veritable quagmire. You have a point there. Tell me one last thing. What would I gain from all this? My Lord Duke, in these uncertain times, I believe it would be to your advantage to be rid of Louisiana in order to focus your attention on your colonies in the South. It will show the court the man you really are and how much you truly deserve your position. And it will silence all the jibes and jeers aimed at my person. Then people would only see me as the man who consolidated the frontiers of the Spanish Empire. What a statesman you are. Come on, you fool, give it up. You're trapped like a rat. Monsieur, I am astounded. I did not think you capable, but you have succeeded. I will be more wary of you the next time. Nonetheless, if you can guarantee Lord Mortimer's support, then yes, you can count on my vote when the time comes. However, I expect you to be discreet with regard to my former partners, without which our agreement will become null and void. Of course, my Lord Duke. You can count on me. Lord Mortimer will be delighted to hear the news. I hope you know what you are getting into, Louis. I bid you good luck. Good night, my Lord Duke. See you tomorrow. Well, that's one thing out of the way. The only thing left to do is wait for the conference to resume tomorrow morning. Good evening, Monsieur le Francais. Duchess, you're here. What a charming surprise. I'm beginning to think you can't be without me. You have managed to penetrate my armor, sir. Am I disturbing you, perhaps? That's not what I said. Ah, by the way, you surprised me during the conference. Why is that? Well, you are going to lose. Why stay with Lord Mortimer? I believe he has every chance of winning. My, you are a rash one. However, if ever you want to change sides, please feel free to let me know. But tell me, you didn't come here to try and make me change my mind, did you? That's the last thing on my mind. 
Although you would have everything to gain by it. Do you perhaps know something that I don't? Come on, Emily. It's time you lay your cards on the table. If you know something I don't about Lord Mortimer, now's the time. I don't want to speak ill of him, but in certain circles, you can't exactly say he has a good reputation. Continue. Well, there have been instances where he has used people, then gotten rid of them once he no longer seemed to need them, Louis. He makes fine promises, makes you feel valuable, tests you. But beware. I'm worried that something might happen to you. Are you advising me to change sides as a precaution? I'd rather say as a safety measure. Louis, if you trust me, you ought to ask yourself why I have chosen home. You do trust me, don't you? Of course, Emily. You know you have my full trust. Louis, you're lying. That's not good. Any more of that and I might get upset. Admit, though, that it does make you think. There's still time, you know. Join us before it's too late. I admit, you've sown the seed of doubt, but I don't know how Lord Mortimer is going to take my last minute change of mind. Don't worry yourself about that, really. It's only discussions and verbal jousting. No one's going to die, whatever happens, and Sir Gregory will be there to support you. Very well. You can count on me to join your side, then. But don't tell anyone until the vote. Promise. We'll make a good team. You'll see. Tell me. Are these visits to Mortimer's always so intense? Yes and no. My sister doesn't normally disappear like she has. Any news of your mother? Still nothing. And you? Any news of your sister? No, but knowing her, I'm persuaded she's on someone's trail. You'll see. She'll surprise us all. If only you knew, Emily. You're right. We must remain positive. I'm sure it won't be long before she turns up. My thoughts, too. She is Duchess Hillsborough, after all. And as such, she is capable of anything. I am sure that you'll appreciate her. You'll see. No doubt about that. And it might turn out that you prefer her to me. Who knows? Rest assured, I don't think it's going to happen. I'm sure she's very nice, but... There is only one Emily Hillsborough. We shall see. Can we change subject, please? I didn't come here to go through all that again. Of course, it's late. You're right. Come, Louis. My friends, do not worry. I assure you that Lord Mortimer's plan will never see the light of day. I shall deal with informing our allies, but for the time being, I need you to make a stand. What do you think about Monsieur de Richet? I don't know yet. I feel there's great potential in him. He looks like he can be trusted. And uh, Duchess Hillsborough. Why isn't she here? She's busy. Don't worry about her. Oh, isn't it time to replace her? Not so fast, sir. She is an important figure. You ought to have a little more faith in her. What are we going to do about Washington? He will be a hard nut to crack. On our chessboard, he is Mortimer's king. Don't worry. Mr. President only wants one thing. To keep his dear America united. He won't jeopardize everything he has achieved on a whim. He has been serving Mortimer for quite some time. 
it won't be easy to uh, bring him around. Do you feel all right, Mr. Godoy? You haven't said a word. Please excuse me, gentlemen. I feel tired. Oh, I see. I think it is high time you left us then. Now! Emily? Emily? Are you there? Sir, the conference is about to begin. You are expected in the conference room. Tell them I'm coming. Thank you. Come on, Louis. The game is back on. My friends, the conference is about to begin. And please excuse me if I troubled you last night with my project. I understand that you might well have a few questions to ask. As you know, the final vote will be cast in a few days. This morning's aim is to answer your questions and check the temperature of your respective positions so that we may reach a greater understanding. As always, Lord Mortimer. Uh, we parted in perfect disagreement, my lord. Where would you like us to take it from? Come, sir. Please let William believe he still has a chance of winning us over. Otherwise, his imprecations will lack panache, and we shall be bored stiff. Oh, let me reassure you. I am convinced that a good night's sleep has brought sound advice, and that this morning will be even more interesting. Therefore, I would like to go around the table in order to hear everyone's first impressions. Well, I am still firmly against it. Even though my choice won't count. Against. 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 And you, Luke Manuel? Well, you see, uh, it is more complicated than it... it Good uh, boy. Calm, Gregory. Don't try to impress my guests, please. They are not your guests. Gregory, anyone under my roof is, by definition, my guest. You included. I would be very grateful if you would let my guests speak. Duke Manuel, you were saying you still had some doubts? Well, you see, the situation has changed since last night. What's going on here, my Lord Duke? You see, I gave it some thought during the night. New arguments have come to light. What do you mean, Duke Manuel? Sir Gregory, I regret to inform you that Spain will not support you in this operation. I vote for. Moreover, in response to arguments brought to my attention, I declare war on France! What? What is he doing? If you think France is afraid of you, you are dreaming. Over ten nations rise against you, young man, and you behave like a yapping little dog. When the French armies are at your door, my Lord Duke, you will change your tune. Well, as for me, I am for Lord Mortimer's project, despite Duchesse Hillsborough's overwhelmingly convincing nocturnal attentions. What? So Emily was playing at trying to win over guests last night? It was nothing more than a friendly little chat, of course. How could it be otherwise? And by the way, remember me to your husband when you see him. And you, President Washington, what is your position? Four, of course. Well, that leaves just yourself and Monsieur Peru, Louis. You're all making me sick. Look at yourselves. What? You are pathetic! Have you been drinking or what? There you are, quibbling away. My Lord Duke this, and Madame Duchesse that. You know very well that we're nothing but puppets on a damn string. Jacques, come in. Let's end the charade. It's over. Jacques. My Lord, thank you for everything you've done for me over the years. But it didn't come for free. And now I see the price is too high to pay. I'll stop. Come, Jack. We'll talk it over. No. I'm finished. I want my freedom back, my lord. I shall no longer work for you. Wait. Derisse, you 
You just can't help it, can you? Stop trying to play the hero, man! Monsieur, I know I don't really know you, but you seem like a decent person. I have done so many horrible things! You blame yourself, I can see that. Everything's not lost. I don't want to do bad things anymore. You can take control of yourself again. You can fix whatever it is you've done. Do you really believe that? Of course, Jack. You'll have all the time you need. Jack, you're not alone. There's nothing you can do against him. Of course there is. We've already started. How can you say that, knowing he's already probably gotten rid of your mother, Louis? No, he hasn't. She's still here. She's alive, Jack. But... Yes, trust me. Come on, Jack. Stop now, before it gets any worse. Give me the gun, please. I wasn't gonna fire at anyone, you know. I know. I don't want him to talk to me. Don't worry, you're safe now, Jack. Monsieur Peru, you could have seriously hurt someone if Monsieur de Richet here hadn't stopped you. Your behavior is unacceptable. You would do better to go and rest in your apartment. My friends, we shall continue the conference later. I would like to apologize for the inexcusable behavior of my guest. We all need to recover from all of this excitement. Take the rest of the day off. <laughs>